www.gundam.tk presents V2 Gundam. Hello again everybody and welcome to a review of the V2 Gundam which is made in 1994 by Bandai and at the time there was no master grade so this being a high grade was the best they had for plastic models at the time from the anime Victory Gundam. Now something I want to explain very quickly is that this is actually the V2 Buster Gundam but I only built the V2 from it. When you have the Buster Gundam and the Assault Gundam, basically what it is is it's the V2 Gundam with a bunch of extra weapon add-ons. Now, if you take them, you can actually combine them and put the Assault and the Buster packs together to make this awesome V2 Gundam. But when you do that, you have a leftover body, and that is what I'm going to look at today in the form of the regular V2 Gundam. So a very quick look at the parts. When you buy the Assault or the Buster Gundam, you're going to get all the main parts for the V2 Gundam. So you're going to get the A sprue, which has combined yellow and blue parts. So these are actually one piece, but they have two colors in them. It also comes with red and white multicolored pieces. And what makes the Buster Gundam different from a regular V2 is that you're going to get two plates L and K, but you can check that out in my review of the Assault Buster Gundam. One big knock against this is the yellow polycaps, but you do get a large pink beam shield and a beam saber which is all one piece. Now when you do this uh, Buster Assault combination and you want to make the V2 Gundam, it doesn't give you the instructions to make the V2 Gundam itself, so you're going to have to use some imagination and basically only use A to G for the sprues. If you're using anything from the later plates, you're not using the right things. And a quick note about these old manuals is they're very unclear compared to today's manuals. So if you're looking for uh, crystal clear instructions to make a V2, you might want to buy the V2 model on its own. Instead of looking at the parts first, I thought we'd take a look at the V2 Gundam when it's all put together. The most noticeable thing about the V2 is its back, uh, well, whatever you want to call it, the V thrusters on the back. Uh, I don't like the pink shield, so we'll just use the beam saber and the rifle. But it's not a bad looking model, and I think it's a good step up on the V1. As far as posability goes, the foot can move a little bit to the side and to the front, and it folds up because that's part of the transformation. And you can see exposed yellow polycaps. The legs bend like this, but they have zero mobility anywhere else. If you're trying to do any poses with the legs, it can come forward by moving the skirt up, but it can't go out to the side. And one big complaint of mine about this is that the skirt, you can see it's just on a pin in there, it's very easy for the skirt armor to fall off. So that's a big knock against it. Uh, something I added was I just used the extra, extra leftover stickers and I just cut some of that. And one of my big complaints about the V2 is that it's a little bit back heavy. So if you look here, what happens is, is you'll be looking on your shelf and all of a sudden the V2 Gundam will be split here where the core fighter detaches. So you could add some silly putty or something to that. As far as the head, decent articulation. It looks pretty good for an old 94 and it's just on a base and this whole thing pops off. For the arms it has a side slide this piece you can use to attach the beam shield on, but it's useless because you have to twist it all the way forward to get that effect. So you have to have them with a dislocated arm to get the shield forward, which is why I don't use it. The hands are very simple, but they do separate the trigger finger from the lower three. In the back, you can pull these down and expose the thrusters. And this part is also used in the core fighter transformation. So it's not very poseable at all. A really quick look at the weapons. Uh, the beam rifle is actually pretty cool. Very easy to line. Just put some black pen in there, erase the excess. As far as the beam saber goes, uh, well, it's a unique shape somewhat, but it doesn't have a white handle, but that's hidden by the hand, so that's forgivable. What's useless, though, is this beam shield. It's half the size of the Gundam itself. Another thing that I probably won't use is the spatula beam saber. I'll just use the regular one instead. If you want to transform the V2 Gundam into its top fighter, bottom fighter, and core fighter, it's very much a pull and put together transformation. So you can pretty much take it apart into its parts. To get the core fighter, you detach the head. 
slide this down and this actually is a pretty cool mechanism and these do adjust a little bit off to the side. Now something that they give you as an extra part is this. This actually isn't included in the Gundam and just put that on and you get the V2's very unique core fighter which is probably one of my favorite of all the Gundam core fighters. My only knock against it is, and you can see this on the Gundam 2, is this piece always wants to split apart. So if you're a better modeler, maybe some cement would be in order. The first step in building the top fighter is turning the arm from this into this by just bending the arm forward. This can all be done without pulling parts off, except for the hand, which will disappear sort of like Optimus Prime. When you've transformed the top fighter, this blue part is only used in this transformation. You actually don't use the chest of the Gundam. And you put the arms on, the back skirt, and the front skirts. And then there are two slots here on the bottom of the core fighter that you can just put on here. And you have the top fighter. Now compared to Force Impulse, which is a review you can check out on the website, I think this is by far one of the best looking uh, Gundam top halves, simply because it doesn't look like uh, the top half of a Gundam bent over. So nice job, even though it's a 94 model. To build up the bottom fighter, all you have to do is bend the foot in like this, and use this custom piece. This piece is not from the Gundam, it's only used when you're making the bottom fighter. So put the legs on here and attach the core fighter. And here it is, the core fighter attached to the bottom fighter. Now for me this one is a lot worse than the top fighter simply because it does look like a set of legs and even the V2's unique core fighter can save it from that impression. The other thing is the legs are loose so they want to fall down all the time. It'll look good if you put it down but if you're actually trying to do any aerial poses it's not going to work. Where would we be without a size comparison? Nowhere. So on the right we have the Master Grade Crossbone Gundam which is 15 meters and it's been down a fair bit but it is still taller than the V2 Gundam even though they should both be the same size. So Bandai, if and when you make a Master Grade of the V2, please make it a little bit bigger. And if you want to make the V2 Gundam look really bad, just put it next to a Master Grade New Gundam. Hard to get them in the same camera shot even. Some final thoughts to wrap up. I'm a big fan of the series V Gundam, which is why I wouldn't wait for a Master Grade, and I had to buy this now. For $15, I think you won't regret it, but you have to do a lot of lining and put in a fair bit of work to try to make it uh, look anywhere near comparable to a Master Grade. I like the weapons. I don't like the general looseness of the kit, with the skirt falling off, with this falling, this able to open up. But overall, I think the transformation is one of the best I've seen for a Gundam, because it's very simple, it doesn't take a lot of time, and uh, despite its pull and put together nature, I'm still a fan of the transformation and do it more than I would with, say, the Zeta or the Force Impulse. So if you're a fan of the series, I say don't wait for a Master Grade, check this one out, and if a Master Grade comes out, I will be first in line to buy it. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you buy the Buster and the Assault Gundam, you can think of this V2 Gundam as coming for free, and then you get this Gundam, which is the most loaded Gundam I've ever seen. Of course, you can check out that review at Gundam.tk. Now here's the V2 next to its V1 Dash Incarnation, and uh, I was a big fan of the V1 Gundam, but I like the V2 that much better. So of course, you can check out the review for that one too. Great anime, I highly recommend you check it out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget, I now have too many Gundam reviews up, and you can check them all out on YouTube at www.gundam.tk.